here's Intel's GPU, and bye-bye Stadia, just like I always knew it would end up this way. And we got some sneak peek details on the RX 7000 series. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. Let me know how your weekend was down below in the comments while I show you pictures and video of Intel's upcoming Alchemist GPUs because these are being spotted all over the internet. And this one actually appears to be a bit more finished than some of the earlier engineering samples that we've seen of this GPU. So here you go in a nice matte black setup. I really like this as opposed to the silver one. Maybe we will get both silver and black versions of these GPUs with Intel just, you know, differentiating the product stack based on color but I really, really enjoy the black look on this, as well as us getting a detailed look at the backside of the PCB of this GPU, which gives us a few things to look at. There's a few things like the soldering sections for the VRAM that's gonna be going on these GPUs, as well as what looks to uh, be an eight plus a six pin power, could potentially, with room, go up to two eight pin power connectors. One of the interesting things to note is that we have a second, almost identical picture, except for the fact that it's on a different tabletop as you can see and this one has these foam core bits attached to these little plug bitties that are on the back of the GPU whether or not the GPU is going to have a back plate to cover those up are those going to make it into the final spec is that something that's just needed in the engineering sample not a hundred percent clear but this is a first really good look at the GPU front side and back side but in case you actually want to see it in video form here you go just an FYI I have no idea where this is from but here we have somebody taking the GPU out of a box and showing us what Intel's Alchemist GPU likely will look like. Now, obviously, we have to wait until Intel gives us further details. What GPU is this specifically? Where is it competing? What the price point is? But one of the interesting things to know is that these DisplayPort, at least one of them, allegedly is going to be a DisplayPort 2.0 port, which would make this the world's first DisplayPort 2.0 GPU. So there's a lot to get excited for. There's some good sneak peeks on everything that's going on with Intel's GPUs. Let me know which one you prefer, this earlier silver edition that we've kind of been seeing about Intel's GPUs or this matte black. I obviously have made my preference clear, but I want to hear from you down below. While you're typing that, I want you to hear about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Hone. Hone is a comprehensive hormone optimization clinic that helps men get back their energy. Hone does this by addressing one of the key areas that explains low energy in men's lives. It's been reported that 30 million men in the US have low testosterone, which affects their daily living. Testosterone is more than just a sex hormone. Optimizing your testosterone can lead to increased energy, increased muscle mass, more focus, and a better overall mood. And Hone helps men get testing and treatment for their low testosterone with real physicians, real science, and real FDA approved methods of treatment. And I'm not a medical expert, but thankfully Hone Health is. And they send you an at-home assessment kit that allows you to test your testosterone levels and they'll connect you with a physician who can actually help you out with all of this. And as I've gotten older, I'm in my 30s, I realized how much energy levels and just making sure I'm in good health matters, not only for me for running my business, but also being a good husband and then also being a good father. If I can't keep up with my kids, I'm not living up to my potential. And that's why I'm so excited to partner with Hone Health. So you can order Hone's easy to use at home assessment today to learn about your testosterone levels. And for a limited time only, you guys can get the at home testing plus doctor consultation for the low price of $45 by going to honehealth.com forward slash you. UFD. Click that link in the video description. Save some money. Check it out. Just making sure things are okay is sometimes worth it for the peace of mind. Big thanks to Hone Health for sponsoring today's video. Rockstar is checking in with the health of their company by letting us know that, hey, everybody who's worried we're not making GTA 6 because we're making too many GTA 5 enhanced and expanded edition and we're doing too much with GTA Online, chill your banana hammocks because, uh, listen, with the unprecedented longevity of GTA 5, we know many of you have been asking us about a new entry in the Grand Theft Auto series and that they're, go they're, they're pleased to confirm that active development for the next entry in the Grand Theft Auto series is well underway. They're not telling you though that it's GTA 4 remastered or that it's a mobile game or that it's actually going to be a metaverse game, okay? It's not It's not even going to be, you know, a full entry into the series. It's going to be like Half-Life Alex. It's like a side project, all right? Grand Theft Auto metaverse, all right? All of that money that you're spending those, was it shark coins? I don't, I 
I don't play GTA online. All that GTA role playing that's been going on across the internet. The next major thing that's going to be in VR, baby. All right. That's that's their cash cow. You think they're coming out with a mainline title that's going to satisfy everything? Mm -mm -mm. No money in that anymore, my friends. And Blizzard confirming that money is indeed in mobile. Don't you have phones? Don't you have phones? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone, right? Blizzard confirming that there is a Warcraft title that should be coming to mobile sometime this year, just like Doblo Mobile. It's great. Don't you guys have phones? It's it's that's where everybody's playing things, especially cloud gaming. Cloud gaming is all of the rage. Don't you hear? We've got things like Google Stadia. We have Amazon Luna, GeForce Now, Microsoft X Cloud, PlayStation Now. Oh, what's that? Oh, Stadia sucks. Stadia is dying. Google's deprioritizing Stadia and making it so they're just going to sell off the back end technology and make it so that companies can manage the front end themselves. Oh, yeah, that checks out. That's about what I thought it was going to be. That's according to a new Business Insider report reporting that Google is completely deprioritizing this. They were allegedly in talks with Bungie to have some sort of deal with Destiny 2 for Stadia to provide cloud streaming for them under the code name of Google Streams, as opposed to Bungie having to develop that themselves. But in case you remember, Sony is buying out Bungie for $3.6 billion and Sony already has cloud streaming hardware licensing going on with Microsoft. So who knows how that's going to play out, but it does seem like the consumer side of Stadia is getting deprioritized with only 20% of Stadia's time being dedicated to the consumer facing portion. But Google wants you to know they still love you, okay? There's a great future coming with Stadia tweeting out, if you hear one thing, hear this. The Stadia team is working really hard on a great future for Stadia and cloud gaming. We hope you agree and we know the proof is in the playing. Thank you marketing for confirming nothing and essentially having no ability to comment on back end deals that are happening because that's the person managing the Twitter account likely isn't the person that's doing the deals to make sure that they're selling off these parts of the business. This happens all of the time where social media is just like, no, our company's not doing that. And then they issue like a press release being like, we were doing this. We just didn't tell anybody about it, but you can tell everybody about crypto stunks, my friends, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about. Bitcoin, resurging a little bit, having a great weekend, almost at $42,000 as of the time of filming, being at 41,940, almost an $800 billion market cap. It did cross above 42,000 earlier on Sunday to be uh, over 42,500, so having quite a decent day. Ethereum also increasing a little bit to be back over $3,000 with a $355 billion market cap, and Dogecoin also having a decent time, up 5.3% to be at 15 points. 5 cents. But speaking of things collapsing and then rebounding, it looks like Peloton might actually be getting bought out by either Amazon or Nike. This is coming after their uh, stock has essentially crumbled underneath their feet as they've been Pelotoning around because it would make sense for either of these companies to pick it up. Nike because they're like a fitness brand. So Peloton kind of ties into that. There's great opportunities with branding associated with Peloton, which is essentially like the whole thing is that it's yeah, the bike is neat, but it's really the experience of being part of the Peloton Nike could sell that and then Amazon could potentially do all of the distribution issues that Peloton had at one point when it comes to installing these things into people's houses but right now it's essentially just a really good price with their stock collapsing from 50 billion dollar market cap down to eight billion dollars as you can see at the report of the news it's up 26 percent in after hours trading but over the last little bit it's collapsed from 150 dollars per stock down to 2460 Peloton straight up not having a good time but always remember doing this every morning and can snap back sagging skin, my friends. And I don't think it's the Peloton. But speaking of expensive things that a lot of people finance in order to have great pleasures right now, Verizon is getting rid of all of their phone contracts that are under three years and making them a minimum or just a max, max. It's just three years. Phone contracts is what Verizon's rolling out with them getting rid of the 24 and 30 month plans that they've had previously. So if you want to get a device through them, you have to buy it outright or you finance it for three years, which I mean, it makes a little bit of sense because phones are getting more expensive. So I can understand like this is causing people to have to finance things longer, kind of like, you know, with the used car market that's going on, people are financing cars longer than ever before. But additionally, I'm just wondering, could this, at least, you know, bright side looking type of thought right here, does this potentially help to impact the waste and like just the amount of churn that's been going on in the smartphone scene where people were up 
upgrading every two years unnecessarily. You buy a flagship this year. Do you really need to upgrade in two years? Like your iPhone 13 is probably gonna be pretty dang good in two years. Why not wait for a third? Especially if this is being offered on all devices. As long as you are planning on getting the device before, financing it over three years instead of two just means your monthly payments longer. You're more likely to hold on to it for a little bit longer period. I don't know. What do you think of this Verizon going to three year contracts? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments, especially because I haven't had a phone contract in ever since I've been like an adult by myself. I've always been prepaid or pay as you go. That's kind of been my thing. I've never had a phone contract. So like, I don't I don't know how most people are actually doing this. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And AMD doesn't want to hear this employee on LinkedIn telling everybody what plans they're working on for their GPUs because AMD's Infinity Data Fabric Silicon Design Engineer confirmed on LinkedIn a whole bunch of details regarding Radeon 7000, the Navi 31, 32, and Navi 33 GPUs being on six and five nanometers from TSMC respectively, as well as the MI300 Compute GPU. This is something that obviously AMD doesn't want out in the open. This is not something that AMD's directly confirmed that they're, you know, calling everything like this. It's, I mean, it's easy to assume it, but this is not like where, you know, the public facing marketing of Dr. Lisa Sue has been putting all of this. So uh, the LinkedIn profile is now gone um, because, you know, you probably shouldn't be putting that kind of stuff out there. I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't get into too much trouble because it's it's a small leak, right? Like it's yeah, we we knew that this was the information. Thank you for like confirming it. And I'm going to confirm that this episode of Hot News is over. I hope you enjoyed your Monday. I'll see you back here tomorrow for breakfast, my friends as we do more hot tech news that's out on the internet. Cheerios.